Here we have a matrix equation connecting the voltage sources in this circuit to the three currents I1, I2 and I3 flowing in the three loops of this circuit. Now we can multiply out the right hand side here of course. So we take the first row and multiply by this column to get this entry of our 3 by 1 matrix over here. This matrix has three rows but only one column. Okay, so we compare entries. So this matrix here, this 3 by 1 matrix must be identical to this matrix over here. So we can see that 30 must equal this expression up here. So we are talking about a voltage source of 30 volts. So the first equation must refer to this loop of the circuit. This is where the 30 volt source is. Now the voltage source in any loop is the sum of the voltage drops across the components in that loop. The voltage drop across the component is given by V equals IR, current times resistance, or V equals RI if you like. It's written RI here for these components. Now you can see that the voltage drop due to current I3 is zero. We have zero times I3, well that's just zero. So that tells us that current I3 does not flow in this loop, anywhere in this loop. Let's look at the third equation. That's 24 equals this expression here. This equation must refer to this loop over here. The voltage source is 24 and the voltage source is the sum of the voltage, voltage drops in this loop. The voltage drop due to current I1 is zero. See we have zero I1 here which is zero. So that tells us that current I1 does not flow in this loop. The currents that flow in this loop here are I2 and I3. Now where exactly they are has to be d determined. I2 could flow through this wire and I3 through the rest of the loop, or I3 could flow in this wire and I2 flow through the rest of the loop. Okay, to, so to sum up, we can see that the main current flowing in this loop here must be I1. Now what direction do we assign to this current? Well, we can follow the usual convention. The shorter line here, the shorter horizontal line, is the negative terminal of the voltage source. The longer line is the positive terminal and we can assume that current flows from positive to negative. In reality of course current is a flow of electrons that flow from the negative to the positive terminal but the convention is that current flows from positive to negative so we will just follow that convention. Now let's look at the second equation. Zero equals this expression here. Zero is the voltage source. Well, it must obviously refer to this loop. There's no voltage source. And zero equals this expression here. Well, we can see that I1 comes into it. Well, I1 is flowing through this wire. We also see that I2 and I3 come into it. Now we see that the main current that flows in this loop cannot be I3, because if it was I3, then I3 would appear in the first equation. Remember we have a zero I3 in the first equation, so I3 doesn't flow through this wire here. If it did flow through this wire, it would appear in the first equation. So the main current in this loop is I2. Now the question is, what direction should we assign to I2? Well, we, we don't actually know what the direction is yet. We don't have enough information. We don't have a voltage source. Um, so we'll just assume to begin with that it's moving in this direction and uh, we can change that if it doesn't fit the equations. As a matter of fact I'll show it flowing in this direction just to show you that this direction is actually wrong. Okay let's go back to this loop here. The voltage source is 30. Now let's calculate the voltage drops in this loop. Well, the current flows through an 8 ohm resistance, so we multiply 8 by I1. Okay, resistance times current by Ohm's law gives us the voltage drop across this resistance. 
okay so only current i1 flows through this wire but now look at this wire here i1 flows through it of course but also i2 flows through it but i2 flows in the opposite direction so when we combine these two currents flowing through this wire we get i1 flowing in the direction in this direction here which is anti-clockwise for this loop but i2 is flowing against it so the combined effect would be i1 minus i2 and the resistance is rb which we have to determine so we multiply it by i1 minus i2 you'll see that we'll have to correct this actually you'll see that the direction that I've assigned to I2 is actually the wrong direction for this problem. Okay, um, let's finally get to this resistance. Only current I1 flows through this resistor, this wire here. So we multiply resistance 12 by current I1. And of course all of this expression has to work out to 30 I1 plus 10 I2. Okay, so I've gathered up I1 terms, 8I1 plus RBI1 plus 12I1. Okay, 8 and 12 is 20, so we have 20 plus RB times I1. So straight away we can compare the I1 terms. So 20 plus RB must equal 30, so RB must equal 10. We have no choice in that. But notice something else here, we have minus RB times I2 equals plus 10 I2. Okay, so the figure of 10 is correct, okay, RB is 10, but the sign is wrong. So the only way to make these two equations equal to each other is to change this minus sign to a plus sign. So that tells us that the direction that we had assigned to current I2 was wrong to begin with. So it's not flowing in the direction shown here. It must be flowing in this direction, so that the combined current flowing through this wire and through this resistance RB is I1 plus I2. Okay, and we multiply I1 plus I2 by the resistance, which we know as 10, to get the voltage drop across this resistor. Let's look at the current in this loop of the circuit. Well, we know it's I3 and we know its direction if we follow the convention for the voltage source. Okay, so this is the positive terminal, the longest line, the shortest, shorter line is the negative terminal. So current flows from positive to negative, even though in reality electrons actually flow the other way, minus to plus. Okay, so the current flows from positive all the way around to negative. So here is current I3. So the voltage source is 24, and that's equal to the sum of the voltage drops across the components. So let's start with the 13 ohm resistance. I3 just flows through this resistor. So we multiply I3 by 13, or 13 I3. Now let's take the voltage drop across RA. Well, I3 flows this way. Okay, down through resistance RA. What about I2? I2 flows up the way. So the combined effect of the two currents flowing through this resistor is I3 minus I2. Okay, so here is the voltage drop across resistance RA. You multiply its resistance RA by the uh, current going through it. Finally, we have this resistor here, 7 ohms, only I3 flows through it. So we multiply uh, resistance by current. So, and from what we're given, all of this here must equal minus 13 I2 plus 33 I3, 0 I1. Okay, so simplifying this here, we have 13 I3 plus RA I3 plus 7 I3. Well, 13 and 7 is 20, so the I3 term is 20 plus RA times I3. And as for the I2 term, we get minus RA times I2. And uh, now we just compare. So we can see that RA must equal 13. And you see the minus sign makes sense as well, because of the directions of the currents flowing through the resistance RA. I, I3 is moving down through it in this direction, but I, I2 is in a sense cancelling it. So that's why we have to subtract the currents to get the combined current. Okay, so we've established what RA is, and if we put 13 in 
If we put 13 in here, we get 20 plus 13 is 33, so everything works out. Finally, we have the middle loop. The voltage source in the middle loop is zero. Okay, let's get the voltage drops. Let's start off with a 6 ohm resistor. Well, the only current flowing through it is I2, so we multiply 6 by I2. Let's move on to this resistor here. Well, the resistance is 10. We can see the combined current is I1 flowing down this way and I2 flowing, so both currents are flowing in the same direction, so we're adding the currents here and also in the direction of um, the loops shown. Okay, so they're positive. Uh, now, what about the resistance RC? Well, I2 is flowing through it. Okay, this wire doesn't connect two different loops. It's a standalone wire. We multiply RC by I2. And we have the 13 ohm resistor. Okay, so I2 is flowing in this direction, but I3 is flowing this way. So the combined current will be I2 minus I3. I2 is flowing in the direction of the loop, so it's positive, so plus I2. But I3 is, is um, going against this current, so we have I2 minus I3. And resistance is 13. So anyway, if we gather up I1, well, there's only one I1 term, that's 10 I1, and that appears in our equation. And as for the I2 term, we have 6 I2 plus a 10 I2 plus a 13 I2. That works out to be 29 I2. And we have RC I2, of course. So, there, so here's our I2 term. And the I3 term is minus 13 I3, and that appears in the equation. So I'll just write down the equation, what we, what we were given, 10 I1 plus 40 I2 minus 13 I3. Okay, so... We can see that 29 plus RC must equal 40. So RC is 11 ohms.